Can you please uh, just introduce yourself, let us know uh, where you went to school, what you studied, and we'll start and go from there. Okay, uh, my name is Bonnie Walker and I went to Smith College. Uh, it's in Western Massachusetts and I majored in math and minored in dance. Okay, and uh, when you graduated, how was that transition from college to industry? Uh, it was pretty rough. It was during a recession. Uh, it was, um, the recession was in progress during my senior year. So, um, and I know this is dating myself, but we had just come out of the 80s kind of, um, you know, investment banking boom. There was a lot of wealth going around and then the stock market crashed. And I was in college as that was happening and then the leading up to the recession and um, the recruiting on campus had traditionally been like those big investment banks, the larger corporations that just needed a lot of people power to operate. Um, and my senior year, they went from having like hundreds of recruiters on campus to like 40. Um, and, uh, you know, starting salaries, like when I was looking at college, they were saying, oh, the average alum, you know, average graduate makes 40,000 a year. And I mean, that went down to like 20, I mean, so it was like cut in half. Um, I did a lot of the recruiting interviews anyway. Um, you know, it was all the glossy brochures, the fancy recruiting, and it didn't go that well for me. And I think it was just because it wasn't really the right place for me, but I felt like I had to do it because it was a recession and those were the employers that were coming to campus to recruit us. Um, so, it, at the end of senior year, I had nothing. Uh, a friend of mine who was on the debate team and was going to go to law school was all like, I'm the only senior with a future. And I mean, the rest of us just laughed. I mean, we knew we had a future. We just didn't know what it was going to be. And that was, that was scary. Um, but at the last minute, um, I had decided to start applying to boarding schools, you know, because I majored in math and minored in dance and also was on the debate team. I figured schools might be interested in having somebody with that skill set. Uh, so I was looking through the boarding schools, you know, because I kind of needed a place to live. Um, my mom had died between my sophomore and junior year. Uh, my dad was living in a really tiny fishing village on the Oregon coast, and it just wasn't realistic for me to go back there for postgraduate anything. Mm -hmm. um, so the boarding schools was a way to kind of find a place to live and a job at the same time. And um, like right before graduation, there's this handwritten sign on the career office door that says new recruiter, sign up for interviews. And my first thought was, oh, what the heck? What's another reject letter, right? <laughs> you know, I've got room on the wall. <laughs> um, so I signed up and I didn't take it seriously because they were so late. I was like, what is this? They're not even in the recruiting season. We're practically not even on campus anymore. Um, you know, I remember scrutinizing every other cover letter, pouring over my resume to make it perfect. And for this interview, I think I pulled a resume out of the recycle bin because I didn't want to waste paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I just showed up. They said it was casual. You didn't have to worry. So I just showed up. And um, halfway through the interview, I started like visibly shaking. And they stopped and said, hey, Bonnie, what's wrong? And I said, I'm really sorry. But and then I told them about like the rest of recruiting season and what that was like with the glossy brochures and they didn't even have a brochure and they thought that was funny. Um, and then I said, but it seems like you guys are real people who I can actually talk to. And um, it turned out the owner of the company was actually doing the recruiting that year. And he said, you know what, we don't need to do the stuff, the interview room stuff anymore. Let's just stop and let's go out to lunch. Um, so you know, starving college student, I gladly accepted a free lunch. Yes. <laughs> um, and I ended up getting the job. I actually ended up having to go interview in London the day after graduation. I flew out of JFK and went and interviewed with the manager who was in London. And um, that really kind of opened my eyes to the strategy that I had completely inadvertently come across. 
Um, Cause I said, you know, and I asked, I said, most other companies are cutting salaries. They've like really contracted the amount of recruiting that they're doing. But I mean, you guys are flying a brand new college graduate to London the day after graduation. Like, how is this possible? And um, it was because they had such a broad international base of clients um, that they needed the London office. Uh, they needed everybody to be familiar with all of the offices and they, you know, still had the, the operating money to, to do all of that. And they said, you know, it's really because we have such a broad international base of clients that this recession isn't affecting us as much. Um, so that was sort of the thing that I stumbled on without really even meaning to is that every recession, Sure, it affects the whole economy, bringing the whole economy down, but it, it's not even. And there's some sectors that just aren't as affected as much as others. And so what I inadvertently learned in that first transition from college to industry was to figure out who's not being affected as much and go find whatever job there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, and this recession is really kind of crazy because some industries are just wiped out. They're just like off the map, but then other industries are booming and they are making the most money they have ever made. So um, it's really important now, I think, um, to do informational interviewing, like figure out which industries are still doing well, which industries have like stepped up to help people during the recession and are providing the tools that people need during the pandemic. Um, and then find the alumni from your school who are in those areas, in those sectors that either haven't been affected or are benefiting from this recession. And just interview with them for information about um, how your skills can fit into their industry. Uh, because when something is booming, they just, they need people and they need um, smart people who've graduated from college and are good problem solvers. So it's not really a specific skill set. They're just going to need people who can think on their feet and solve problems. I feel like you just told me everything I need to know to get up, like to get through this like <laughs> pandemic. Wow. <laughs> um, so did you end up moving to London and? Uh, no, I just needed to interview with the, oh, okay. so the manager at the time was um, working out of the London office. So I needed to go interview with him. Okay. Um, I think it was a political move uh, among the company and I was glad to be the pawn who got to go to London to yeah. make the politics smooth over, right? <laughs> um, the job was actually in New York, so I moved to New York City, um, okay. which was big and overwhelming from a girl who was from a tiny fishing village on the Oregon coast, but <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was fun and I'm, I'm really glad I did it. <laughs> That's awesome. So during that time, um, when you were kind of in that panic mode of looking for um, a new or a job post grad and all that stuff, how did you deal with that like mentally and emotionally? And what did your like support look like? Because I, I want like and the viewers and like college students graduating now to gain some perspective and ideas on how to like you know take this. Uh, pandemic and this sort of recession and how to take it day by day. Yeah, so self-care is hugely important right now. And self-care wasn't really a term back then. I, I think I was doing it anyway. Um, you know, I even though my mom had died, uh, you know, my her family was still wanting to help me. So I reached out to my aunts and uncles. Um, and it's, it's kind of a funny story because um, just let my aunt is going through her garage right now. I mean, right, we're stuck at home, everybody's cleaning out the garage, and she calls me up and she says, Bonnie, I have a copy of your resume from 1992. And I just, like, I couldn't even believe it. I was like, you could get rid of that, it's okay. You know? Like, I'm like, none of it is relevant anymore. You know? and that's all my like Dairy Queen jobs and you know, that I, you know, dishwashing during college, you know. Um, so, but it's proof that, you know, I was talking to my family and asking them for help. And even though I majored in math and minored in dance, my aunt, who was a pharmaceutical rep was peddling my resume, um, you know, to try to help me out. 
Um, so I think it, it's keeping in touch with family members um, or good friends, you know, if family members isn't really an option for you. Um, find your people, even if you can't be with them in person and just check in. Um, and that's like another good way that the informational interviewing can be nice is just, um, it's a way to meet new people and kind of keep that social skill going. Um, and then kind of figure out where in the sectors that are still thriving your skill set and interests can fit in. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that um, makes a lot of sense as to like leaning on your support systems. And sometimes I think people, especially kids, like forget that they have more support sometimes than they think, or their support looks different in everybody's lives as well. Um, so I wanted to ask one last question uh, that I like to ask everybody. And it's, uh, what is like one piece of advice or one lesson that you would want to give yourself uh, when you were going through that and that you would want to share with the graduates today? Sure. Um, you know, it's funny because somebody actually gave me this piece of advice, but what I'd like to do is just rewind and give myself that advice a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because when I got the job, you know, it was, money was still tight. I mean, I, it, moving to New York City is not cheap and I had to use all my graduation money just to like pay my first month's rent. I had to get an advance to pay, you know, the deposit. And so um, as I was starting to come out of that, my colleagues were going out for drinks and I was, I mean, I felt like, oh my God, like, like drinks in Manhattan, that's like, you know, another student loan to go get that. And, and one of my colleagues who was a former trader said, you know, what are you worried about, Bonnie? You're going to make more money. And no one had ever said that to me before. Um, and I was 22 and it just really opened my eyes um, kind of inadvertently, but also kind of intentionally to the whole abundance versus scarcity mindset. Um, and growth mindset versus fixed. And that's so important right now. Um, you know, if you are 20, 21, 22, you are gonna make more money. Don't worry about it. Like it's gonna happen at some point. And to, you know, with that support group that you find, whether it's aunts, uncles, friends, alumni from your school, you know, check in with someone and talk growth mindset. You know, really, um, we didn't have these terms back in 1992, <laughs> um, but we do now. And there's a ton of information on the inter internet about just being in that growth mindset, um, both for your own personal well-being and then also to make you a better candidate to interview. Um, so you'll make more money and just go get into that growth mindset right now. <laughs> Thank you. I love that you kind of like you were able to pinpoint the exact moment where it clicked and somebody said that to you. Definitely. I think we all need to hear that, uh, especially when it comes to a lot of scarcity mindset right now. So there is. That. Yeah. Thank you for being on Life's Not Linear today, Bonnie. I was uh, really excited to hear your story and hopefully we can have you